10 matches that deserved to main event WrestleMania. Number 10, The Rock vs. Hulk Hogan, WrestleMania 18. WrestleMania 18 was main evented by the 2002 Royal Rumble winner Triple H vs. Chris Jericho. Whilst this was indeed a suitable world title match for WrestleMania, it was ultimately overshadowed by a dream match between The Rock and Hulk Hogan. The dream match exceeded all expectations and numerous wrestlers, including Jericho himself, have stated that the match should have been in the main event slot, as Jericho in the game had an impossible task. The Rock vs. Hogan also deserved the main event slot because The Rock's work during the Invasion storyline was superb, and he was still arguably the most over-wrestler in the entire company. Nevertheless, whilst it remains disappointing that the Dream Match didn't headline the biggest show of the year, it didn't hinder the magic that was the inaugural Rock vs. Hogan matchup. Number 9, Shawn Michaels vs. The Undertaker, WrestleMania 25 Greatness was achieved at WrestleMania 25 when Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker stole the show. Both men put on a clinic and some fans classed the match as the single greatest match in the history of WrestleMania. Due to how outstanding the match was, there was not a single match on the face of the earth that could successfully follow it, and this meant that the main event matchup of Randy Orton vs Triple H was met with a lukewarm response. In WWE's defense, at the time, Orton vs Triple H headlining the show was the right call. The feud was red hot and fans were expecting a war between the two foes on the grandest stage. Unfortunately, the match fell flat as both men wrestled as if they weren't in an epic blood feud. Appearing on Out of Character, Orton spoke about the pressure of main eventing following the HBK vs Undertaker match, and this is what the former WWE Champion had to say. I remember being in the locker room with Triple H, and they had a little monitor back there, and we were watching Undertaker vs Shawn Michaels, and he's just sitting there. I saw what is happening, but he was being vocal about like, oh, god damn it. I'm like, oh, they're having a great match. What's the problem? Well, we're gonna have to follow that kid. Choke slam, kick out, super kick, kick out, tombstone, kick out, one, two, oh, the whole crowd is gonna be tired. Number eight, John Cena vs. The Undertaker, WrestleMania 34. It's well documented just how much of a failure the main event of WrestleMania 34 ended up being. The show was main evented by Brock Lesnar vs. Roman Reigns for the Universal title, and the match was atrocious in every aspect and it featured a crowd that wanted no part in seeing the match in the main event slot. In terms of what match should have main evented, WWE had numerous options. Firstly, they had the dream match between John Cena and The Undertaker. If WWE extended the match to a main event level length, something The Undertaker was pushing for, then the match would have fully deserved the main event spotlight. Other matches that could have easily headlined included a show stealing Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle vs Triple H and Stephanie McMahon mixed tag, and potentially AJ Styles vs Shinsuke Nakamura. That's if WWE committed to giving the two talents free reign in delivering a match for the ages. Number 7, Triple H vs The Undertaker, WrestleMania 27 it's incredibly likely that WrestleMania 27 was only main evented by John Cena vs The Miz because of The Rock's implied involvement. If The Rock wasn't involved as the host of WrestleMania, then another match would have likely been the main event slot, and that match would have been the Triple H vs Undertaker showdown. WrestleMania 27 is often regarded as one of the worst WrestleMania events of all time, and for good reason, yet the game vs The Dead Man was a truly epic encounter that saved the show from being a complete train wreck. If the show was main evented by these two legends, then the show as a whole may have been looked on more fondly in the eyes of the WWE fanbase. Number 6, Ric Flair vs Randy Savage, WrestleMania 8 It came as a huge surprise when Ric Flair vs Randy Savage for the WWE title didn't headline WrestleMania 8. As well as having a truly personal rivalry heading into the match, the actual match was an utter masterpiece. The match highlighted just how tremendous Flair and Savage were, and the match, if it was placed in the main event slot, would have been labelled as one of the best main events of the 90s. Instead of the WWE title match main eventing the show, the show going off the air with a Savage title win, WWE opted to have Hogan vs Sid main event the show. This main event match was a dull affair, and it was only in the main event slot as it featured Hogan as well as a return of the Ultimate Warrior. Number 5, Kurt Angle vs Rey Mysterio vs Randy Orton, WrestleMania 22 It was previously an expectation that if a wrestler won the annual Royal Rumble, then they would main event WrestleMania. However, in 2006, Royal Rumble winner Rey Mysterio didn't main event the show, and instead he was given a 9-minute world title matchup against Kurt Angle and Randy Orton. 
Whilst the time limit didn't impact the matchup, it was 9 minutes of non-stop action, and if the match was placed in the main event position of the show, fans would have no doubt witnessed a classic. This isn't to say the main event of WrestleMania 22 was bad, as the John Cena vs Triple H match for the WWE title was great, yet the visual of WrestleMania going off the air with Mysterio as world champion would have been truly incredible. Number 4 Diesel vs Shawn Michaels WrestleMania 11 WWE's business wasn't in the best place in 1995, so they decided to latch on to any mainstream attention they could. For WrestleMania 11, instead of having a WWE title match main event the show, they decided to have Lawrence Taylor vs Bam Bam Bigelow main event. This was a controversial move, as WWE needed to create new stars, and booking a celebrity in the main event of WrestleMania and booking that celebrity to win the matchup was the opposite of what they should have been doing. The rightful main event was easily Diesel vs Shawn Michaels for the WWE title, as the match had a strong story and the quality of the match was worthy of a WrestleMania main event. Number 3 Bret Hart vs Stone Cold Steve Austin WrestleMania 13 Although the WWE product was seeing a surge of popularity by WrestleMania 13, the main event of the show wasn't reflective of the product to come. The Undertaker and Sid engaged in a lackluster main event that had little build and didn't warrant such an elite position on the card. It's a common consensus that the main event of the show should have been the undisputed classic between Bret Hart and Stone Cold Steve Austin. These two icons faced off in a submission match, and the match wasn't just known for its quality, it was also the unofficial start of the Attitude Era, as Stone Cold emerged as one of the hottest acts in pro wrestling. Number 2 Charlotte Flair vs Sasha Banks vs Becky Lynch WrestleMania 32 Roman Reigns' character was being met with disdain by the time he main evented WrestleMania 32. That year's Mania was main evented by Triple H vs Roman Reigns and the match was heavily panned as the fans loathed Reigns at the time and they had zero interest in seeing the matchup unfold. WWE had the perfect opportunity to deliver something new and fresh for the main event of the aforementioned WrestleMania and this would have been to have the women's division take center stage. The match of the show was ultimately the triple threat match for the women's title between Charlotte, Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch and seeing the three women in the main event position would have been a major deal. If this had occurred, WWE may have liked to have changed the finish as Banks, who was immensely popular at the time, winning the matchup and the title would have been an incredibly positive way to bring WrestleMania to a close. And number 1, The Undertaker vs CM Punk, WrestleMania 29 CM Punk had an incredible year leading up to Mania 29 and he without question should have headlined the show. Whether Punk made have entered the show vs The Undertaker or he was inserted into the John Cena vs Rock rematch, it didn't matter to the fans and it didn't matter to Punk who was hurt that he wasn't main eventing the show. The match Punk had with The Undertaker on show was widely acclaimed and Punk clearly went into the match with a chip on his shoulder. The actual main event of the show, that being Cena vs The Rock 2, paled in comparison to the WrestleMania 28 encounter and WWE were quite rightly heavily criticised for delivering a once in a lifetime matchup a second time. Thankfully, all hope isn't lost when it comes to Punk main eventing a WrestleMania event, and now that he's back in WWE, it's likely that if he's fit and healthy, he'll be in the main event slot come WrestleMania 41 in 2025. But there you have it folks, matches that deserve to main event WrestleMania. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.